Welcome to Gate Crashers, a podcast dedicated to kicking open the door to your next favorite thing. Our mission, our creed, our code is this, to make all things more approachable and accessible to everyone. We want you to find a universe that you'll fall in love with. We are proud to introduce our new series, Sex and Whiskey, where our ghosts... And- <laughs> where our hosts, Nikki and RJ, will sip on a dram of the good stuff while discussing the more exciting stuff. We will take you on a journey, exploring whiskeys from around the world, while also educating you on the birds and the bees, especially correcting what school or your parents missed on. Our goal is to promote a safe and fun environment that will leave you empowered and educated on your next bedroom adventure. So sit back, pour a drink, and get ready for sex and whiskey. Hi, everyone out there. I am RJ. My pronouns are he, him, and I am one of your co-hosts. I have been a registered nurse for the past 12 years, and I'm excited to talk to you today. And my name is Nikki. My pronouns are she, they. I am a sex, health, and wellness coach, and I have been in that industry for about two years. Hi, Nikki. Hi, RJ. So uh, today is going to be a fun one. Our overarching overarching topic is masturbation. Um, and it's not just solo fun. It's fun for everyone. But before we do anything, if you have missed our first episode, we go through three flights of whiskey tastings and intermittently discuss the topic of the day. So let's get started with our first flight. Um, I'm going to take the lead on this one, if that's okay. So today I brought a Jameson Black Barrel um, whiskey. It is anywhere from $45 to $50. It's strong, very strong. Reminds me of college drinking. Um, It's sweet with a salty finish. And I didn't know any better way to say that one. (laughs) Delicious. I love it sweet and salty. There it is. Yeah, that's actually, that is, yeah, that's good. That's good drinking. All right, Nikki, what do you got for us today? So my first whiskey is a bourbon. It's called Buffalo Trace. And it's about $30. The thing that makes this one special is that it's fucking hard to find like outside of Kentucky, um, which is one of the reasons I chose it. I was like, oh, okay, it's hard to find. Uh, it has a rating of about 90 on, you know, those fancy people who do this for a living where they rate it. Those very fancy people. The ver- I mean, I'm just, I'm an amateur uh, <laughs> very much, but I chose it because I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's so it- here goes our sponsor. <laughs> Watch them as they fall. <laughs> so it's one that because there's so much hype like oh my gosh we got to get our hands on it it's hard to find I was like this has got to be like amazing right and sure if you like cold syrup that's great because that's what (laughs) that's what it smells like to me Mm -hmm. and I, I think it's just overly sweet and there's not a lot to balance it out um so I chose it though mainly because of the point was it's different strokes for different folks really like that's a topic different and that's part of you got the stroke part down uh, we're talking about stroking today so that's why that's my first one so cheers i'm gonna cheers you're right let me let's slash it yeah (laughs) clink yeah you enjoy that syrup (laughs) i fucking hate it sorry (laughs) I promise I love the other two. <laughs> well, that's a that's a good start off um, because uh, it's definitely a uh, different strokes for different folks type of day. Um, so as we kind of started off, uh, we're going to be talking about masturbation. So let's hop right into it. And I want Nikki to take the lead here. Um, so what should we be talking about with masturbation? I think the place to start is just to acknowledge the fact that it is so shame inducing to even talk about masturbation. I think in general, people are more willing to talk about sex, like penetrative sex, than they are to think about touching themselves and talk about masturbation. And I don't like 
I don't understand why it's weird. It's such a natural thing. And it's like our body is a fucking amusement park. Like, let's explore. Let's go on several rides. We can go on the rides. Couple of the rides are broken down. Couple of the rides need some maintenance. But overall, there's a fun house. There's there's, a fun house somewhere. (laughs) There's at least there are three fun houses. (laughs) Depending on the day of the week, there's three fun houses. For is it your birthday elbows. then there's definitely three fun houses <laughs> depends on who you are yes it depends on who you are that's right and how how much trust there is <laughs> anyway so in terms of masturbation there's a lot of shame um but one study and there are so many studies out there about masturbation and sex and sexuality and so every time i re- reference a study i want to everyone to keep in mind that A lot of these studies happen with college students, so that sort of demographic, um, and straight people, just as an FYI. So you think about that, and if you ever get a chance to be a part of a study that's about sexual wellness, please jump on it. That's just like a shameless plug. But 95 to 98% of adults either have masturbated or they actively masturbate. Or they're liars. Or (laughs) everybody does it probably Mm -hmm. now i'm gonna stop to say if you don't masturbate if you choose not to masturbate i don't want anybody to think that this is promoting like you have to masturbate we're here to sort of take the shame out of it and just more to show like what masturbation really is about and what it's not and i think with that i'm gonna kind of go into some of the myths about masturbation because I feel like we've heard quite a bit um, growing up. Actually, RJ, I want to ask you, like, what's one of the biggest myths about masturbation that you heard growing up? I mean, everyone goes to the old standbys of uh, if you do it too often. Well, again, male perspective. Um, If you do it too often, you're going to go blind. You're going to grow hair on your palms. Um, I I think... uh, uh, and as I got older, uh, someone was talking about the killing your sex drive. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, there's there too much uh, towards desensiti- uh, desensitization, which there's half truths along the way. But I mean, the the overall theme is that um, something bad is going to happen if you do it. That's 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 the takeaway there. And then there, I think a lot of it too kind of has a religious um, component to it, which. Uh, I don't want to get too too deep into that one, but I, I definitely think the, the the word of the day is shame, because yeah. you and I can be like you know talking very freely about um, sexual relationships, but uh, no one is going to come on here and be like, yeah, I jerked off like fifteen minutes before I hopped on here. Um, what did you watch? Well, what I started with and what I ended with for two different videos, but it's okay. Um, I that would be a great guess, but I don't think it's going to happen. You know, nobody off the street is going to be talking, being that open with you. Why is it? Uh, it where where does this deep rooted fear and shame come from? And I I think well, so I want to say now this is just a TLDR on the Bible, which anything I say next could it could be anything because TLDR on the bible like most people it's too long didn't read even people who use it as a weapon they didn't read it um jesus never said you can't jerk it like just that's not the context of like masturbation in the bible and when people talk about it being like a sin that's not even the context of where people grab that from that's not what happened jesus didn't say that um it has to do with the idea of finishing outside of a woman and it, you can't procreate mm-hmm. that way so that being said all women y'all can masturbate there's nothing in there saying you can't you can't do it get your rocks uh, off yeah do, do it. it and yeah yeah don't yeah jesus didn't say you couldn't jerk it i don't want to be go to- your own dj all right <laughs> You play whatever song you want down there. Downstairs DJ. Yeah, Downstairs you scratch, DJ. scratch that record. Do what you got to do. Um, but yeah, I don't want to go too deep into the religious side of it because I think it's known that that's sort of beaten into people as a society. But even now, like in modern day communication, there are so many myths and I'm just a couple of myths out there. And this is shit I've pulled from message boards. And in some cases, I've changed it or reduced it a bit, but shit that you hear um 
Masturbation will reduce your lifespan as it sucks vital energy and increases the recharges necessary. For more information, Google lithium ion battery maintenance. So essentially they're complaining or comparing masturbation to uh, your a lithium ion battery getting used a lot. So I know a couple of people who should be dead by now then. So that's, yeah. that's crazy. I, yeah, no, it's those things do have a lifespan. Um, so this is one of my favorites. Our bodies have a way of telling us that we are throwing away precious nutrition and other vital substances in the form of semen. Mm. Bapping is like donating your blood over and over again. It destroys your body from the inside. <clears throat> that's not what, that's not what it is. It's not what it is. Like, just no, that's not what it is. Um, after See, I don't. I don't even want you to to say where you got these sites from because I don't want anyone to be further reading this bullshit because that's what it is. It's just yeah. it's just bullshit. But, but we all we all it. know we all know where where and it's I, coming from. The fact that I went after it really was. Just, I pulled from websites <clears throat> because it's out there. There's a culture of this. You'll find it in Twitter. You'll find it in Reddit. You can find it anywhere of just shaming people into thinking they shouldn't masturbate. So we have those uh, general ones, like after your balls, after you empty your balls, your chances of impregnating a female are many times worse than what it would be if you abstained from orgasm for three months. In this specific forum, when I pulled it out, somebody they were shaming someone who had masturbated that morning because they were trying to say like, you shouldn't be masturbating. Um, now was this, was this month specific? Cause I know there's a certain month. No, that... no, this okay. was an older no. Um, oh, all right. Yeah. It was not that month. Uh, or this was a forum meant for something specific. Same um, house, I different would... room. Yeah. Yeah. So, I gotcha. um, one thing that is very popular in bro science, yeah, sure, someone's going to be like, oh my God, she's coming for me. Like, yeah, whatever. Bro studies. Um, yeah. Uh, bro MD. Yeah, bro MD. Uh, it impacts your workouts and ability to gain muscle. Hmm. And so there are people who say don't masturbate. It drains you of these vital nutrients and it impacts your ability to work out and grow muscle. Here's the deal. My husband is fucking jacked, okay? Like he works out, he's he lifts. And I brought this up with him and he was like, Psh, I'm not jacking off right before I'm deadlifting. Like that's not what you're doing. So yeah, after you masturbate, after you orgasm, you're going to be kind of tired and you're mm -hmm. probably not trying to lift like a couple hundred pounds of anything. So yeah, in that sense, yes. But in general, masturbating every day, two times a day, three times a day, even that's not going to impact your workouts unless you're doing it right before you work out. In which case, what the fuck are you doing? Like, don't do that. Like, I can't, I can't even function after I have an orgasm for like an hour. Like I can't. Even. So why would you do that? So that's just some of the myths that are out there existing in the universe. Um, and then another one is that you are not going to be in a relationship or people who are in relationships don't masturbate. That's, that's pretty well lie. perpetuated. That's, that's a lie. That's, I have a husband. I have a wife. I'm me. I, I think, we're us. We're here. We're us. We're here. And we're married, not and to each other. Not to each other. So. Um, I think first <laughs> off, I, I don't know where to start. <laughs> but the the general feeling that I'm getting is that uh, there's a well of insecurity, um, and uh, the best way that people can compound their own insecurities by grabbing others to make them feel insecure about mm -hmm. themselves because there's you know when you throw a pity party or you you make a boat with misery you need more passengers and the way to do this is through your, your bro science you know you got your lab coat on but the lab coat doesn't have sleeves because you got to show off your arms mm -hmm. um bro science <laughs> um oh <my> God. So. <laughs> i'm just imagining it and I have like my old lab coat from dietetics days when mm -hmm. I was like working grounding in hospitals and stuff. And 
I kind of want to rip the sleeves off and give it to my husband. <laughs> I just like because that's what I like. I just imagine like a bunch of like you know Jack Bros, you know, with the the clipboards being like, yeah, like can't drink a day, you know, yeah. or however they talk. Um, but uh, <laughs> sure, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> and and I think too, uh, we've kind of ruined it. Uh, the internet has a has a twofold uh, way. Uh, the more important one is that it's created these communities. It's fostered them. Um, you basically have these um, sounding boards and these echo chambers where they are able to kind of spout this nonsense. And no one's like, no, that's stupid. Um, but more like, no, that's genius. Like, look yeah. at this guy. We're just getting this. Oh, he's so right. Yeah. Mind blow. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know. We're not here to solve how to fight it or how to combat it. We're just here to tell you that if, you have to lurk through certain sites and then you have to go deeper and deeper into those sites to get this type of information. It probably isn't the best information. Mm -hmm. That's, and, and, and I mean, I, just from my own standpoint, I, I hope that's the, the part of it here. But um, I kind of want to talk also specifically about the female shame into it because uh, women masturbate what yeah. what is this yeah. what is this true I heard a rumor once can you elaborate <laughs> uh women uh people with vulvas how yeah that's true I shouldn't it... say women I say people people with that I don't even know the the, the correct terminology and I'm butchering it otherwise but uh, person's however you, you want to say it vagina or vulva you could go either way um there we go. but yeah that mm, we um hell yeah we fucking do it like i have no shame i've got like a box of vibrators next to me for show and tell women masturbate and our experiences it experiences with it and the shame surrounding it it is different than what men face uh but for women oftentimes it's like fetishized like you mm -hmm. can well yeah there's like a whole industry and a whole you know subset of pornography which is a whole other conversation it's about watching women you know get off cam girls how whatever you're familiar with so it's like yeah that's that's it happens it's a thing that happens and it's hot and if you think it's weird i'm sorry it's not weird at all it's not, not weird it's well and, awesome. and it's it, when you talk about it too i mean we're mainstream versus the 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 other stream the other side of things um there was a franchise built on a guy fucking a pie because he was horny um so that's male mainstream you know and then the the dirty side oh she's got an only fans what does she do oh she diddles herself like that's kind of the 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 avenues that we kind of see here, and it's it's kind of disturbing because it first off reinforces the stigma against women and their bodies, and you know how they should be viewed and treated, and, and um, it just continues that stereotype down down the road, and and males it's high fives and you know rainbows and showers, I guess I don't know. Um, <laughs> it works okay yeah, that's what it, it works. is it works it, but it definitely it's definitely a horrific double standard that is perpetuated and it's going to continue on unfortunately and and i do see that the the kind of way out too is now that you know there there is these people who are empowered enough to go on camera and do it yeah. and make a shit ton of money doing it um yeah. i mean that's that's where the power lies now if there's if there's money behind it there's power Yes. And I think there's a huge movement in embracing that more and more. Mm -hmm. I, that's going to be like a whole episode. Yeah. Know, we're, we're, we're going to dive into that later. Don't, uh, don't, worry. don't, don't worry. Don't worry. We're going to be all over that. But I think that, you know, women masturbating and I will talk about this more in the episode, the way that we are programmed to think about it. Um, and even, you know, even, people with penises as well like it's just it pr programmed to think of it as like there's one button to push mm -hmm. and because we're taught that um we don't really explore ourselves in a way that can translate to 
sexual satisfaction in the bedroom with our partners because women who are partnered and men, they do masturbate. We already said mm -hmm. it. So um, yeah, those are just some of the myths. I will touch really quickly on addiction because I'm sure somebody out there is like, wait, what about addiction mm -hmm. and compulsive masturbation? If masturbation is doing something like any other addiction, it's interfering with your ability to function when, with school, work, life. If you feel the need to like, where are hands above the table? If you feel the need to like jerk off at work on your Zoom calls. <laughs> Thanks, RJ. Um, yeah, that's when it's like, okay, is that addictive? But if you masturbate and you're like, I'm addicted to it because I do it every day, but the feeling mm. that you're feeling is just shame and it's mm. not interfering with other activities, don't let somebody on a message board tell you what you're doing is a shameful activity um, or it's draining your balls of nutrients. It's not. That's bullshit. It's okay to masturbate every day. The key and where it turns into addiction and a problem is when it fucks up the rest of your life, just like any other addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's my like, I'm aggressive about something on the internet moment. Um, Listen, if, if the takeaway here, <clears throat> before we, of course, go on to our second flight, the takeaway here is that there is no shape and that, you know, the myths that you're reading out there are, that's all they are, they're myths. Um, and it's important and it's part of a healthy sexual diet one way or another. Um, whatever parts you have downstairs, it's just part of your life. You're allowed to do it. There's, there's no, nobody's going to come out and get you. All right. And as long as you can do it in a safe and healthy way, then, you know, that's all you need to do. But I think we need another drink before we really dive a little deeper into this. And Nikki's going to take us with her, with her. I need to um, get this cough syrup out of my, I feel <laughs> awful, like ripping into it. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's there's there's somebody at Buffalo Trace to be like, we're never fucking sponsoring these. That's fine. I have other brands that I would well, okay. Yeah. Deserac is fine. Um mm -hmm. I think they own Buffalo Trace. That'll be another anyway. Don't hate us. I'm just being honest. Different That's what this podcast is about. So the honest. next one is um wild turkey rare breed barrel proof. Now, wild mm. turkey throws me back to <laughs> don't. <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's great it's good yeah I'm gonna start laughing until I cry again. <laughs> uh wild turkey you mentioned yours brought you back to like college that first one yeah uh, yeah I don't know how I graduated from high school don't do this kids but wild turkey reminds me of my high school days and so but this isn't that wild turkey that was just this big ass handle so when I first saw it I was like ew no and my husband's like no it's different yeah. i'm like oh it's fancy that was wilder turkey that You're was just drinking wild turkey that was feral turkey <laughs> that was free range was turkey <laughs> it's like a gamey turkey it's real gamey you gotta brine that bitch for a bit um i'm thinking of a story with wild turkey i'm not gonna tell i'm absolutely not telling but it's 40 dollars for a bottle same rating as buffalo trace um i like this one because it's very citrusy and it's a bourbon. It's about 55% um, ABV. I think it is cast strength. Yeah. So it's got a good spice to it. A lot of citrus, um, but it has a leathery finish and I'm mm -hmm. obsessed with leather, like the smell of it and everything. Stop it. <laughs> I didn't say anything. No, your eyebrows screamed everything. <laughs> anyway, uh, cheers. Just cheers yeah yours, oh my yeah. my spiel my spiel yeah do yours yeah. um i'm drinking bullet bourbon uh which is one of the most kind of universal bourbons in terms of just great mixers great straight up on the rocks however you want it um ranges anywhere from 50 to 60 dollars. you can really find it anywhere um and it's got a very smooth palate very smooth finish uh tastes mapley oaky and uh, I don't know. I just, it's, I just like it. It's just. I think that's one of my favorite. This is brands. definitely a, uh, you know, light a candle, turn the, turn the lights low. Okay. Get out the bullet bourbon. And the uh, bullet vibe. What? Actually, yeah. Yeah. I once, 
Bullet. That would be, you know, if you have a bullet vibrator and a bullet bourbon, you get two bullets for the price of one. The bullet gift pack coming this Christmas. I have a bullet vibrator, but we'll wait until... That's for later. That's, That's for later. later. That's I'm for just... flight number three. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> not like that perverts it's not what i'm no, just kidding nobody's a pervert no one that's right there's no shame here didn't we we're just all, go over this we're all sex nerds kink nerds you know i swear i get some weird stuff on twitter where people slide into dms and make assumptions about me just listen um as we covered in our last episode there's a word it's called consent okay mm -hmm. you can't slide into them and you definitely can't slide into DMs without consent. All right. So remember that, folks. Yeah. Sorry. Um, That's just a side note. <laughs> now, here's 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 question. Here is the question. And we're going to dive into this. Masturbation and healthy relationships. Is that mm -hmm. a thing? That is definitely a thing. Um, mm. Yes. And I think something to think about in general is masturbation is it's a natural thing and there are health benefits mm -hmm. and it's healthy for both partners one of the big things is it helps people sort of explore their fantasies and figure out what it is they like and don't like like thinking about those things but also physically touching themselves understanding how certain things feel so you can if you know exactly what you like you can help your partner figure out exactly listen the, what you uh, like in in relationships um and i don't want to say that for you know if you have a penis there's a relatively straightforward avenue to approach it all right there's 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 a handful of tricks and I think that when you flip the script to a vagina, there is like a symphony of, of, of delights and avenues. But I also will concede that's, that's a narrow approach to it because as we're going to see in masturbation, everybody's got their own feels. Everybody's got their own tastes and flavors, speeds, grips, stuff like that. So how can we incorporate it? What do we do? What do we do? Who, we need a maestro. Be the maestro. <laughs> oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> I just I'm I'm having like a lot of thoughts that I just don't need to say on camera right now. So um that's her flight number three. Yeah, Go no, ahead. there's all that's that's where all the crazy shit happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to go back a moment and just talk about the health benefits of masturbation outside of it and mm -hmm. how it can help with relationships. So, and I say help in relationships. Now there are instances where people have sexual dysfunction and that translates into shame and feeling shamed in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. It even creates anxiety and masturbation can actually increase sexual desire and sensitivity as you get to know yourself uh, and figure out what you like. Um, vibrator use among women and men has been linked to increased desire, arousal, and sexual function. And women also reported an increase in lubrication while men reported better erectile function. So there are studies that have indicated that it's like masturbation there can translate into better sex in the bedroom. We mm -hmm. have that. But if you think about what else masturbation does, like that, you know, that post, what is it, post nut bliss and post nut clarity. Um, Post not clarity, PNC. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's like there are all these sort of chemicals that are going through your body. There are neurotransmitters that mm -hmm. are released when you have an orgasm, and yeah. you can't always be like lining up with your partner to get off. Like it's just it's a whole thing. It doesn't always work. So definitely, like each partner being able to masturbate, fantasize, explore themselves on their own. Like there's benefits there but there's also this these neurotransmitters that get released that help with stress so you have dopamine endorphins oxytocin testosterone and prolactin mm -hmm. are all things that play into it that get released when you have an orgasm mm -hmm. and that's just you feel better you feel yeah. better like if i'm really stressed the fuck out i don't necessarily want to have a 
sex with my partner. And it's like, what are the things that I could be doing to help with that? Well, hell, if masturbation at like two o'clock in the afternoon, when I get a break, like give me five minutes, it's going to relax me just a bit. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be an issue with that. And if anything, it should be something that is normal and openly talked about even between yeah. couples, but that one's kind of hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, and there are also other benefits of masturbation. One fun one that I'm going to throw out there is it can actually help with the pain for menstrual cramps. So people, if you have a uterus, um, yeah, supposedly it helps. It's not something I ever tried. I no longer have a uterus. So like from a, for medical reasons that fucker was evicted from my body but um yeah that's something to consider as well so masturbation has a lot of good good benefits helps relax your muscles i've, I've heard a couple of other benefits out there um but not enough studies to back those up so i won't i won't go there uh yeah and you mentioned something else and i was going to get back to it i already forgot it's that's great. I'm drinking. That's what this is. <laughs> well, I know, I know with, uh, you know, master masturbation is a part of foreplay. Um, yes. especially in that role. I, I know that, uh, from the health and wellness side of things, uh, if a woman or those who have a vagina, um, you know, achieves an orgasm prior to sex, they are actually more inclined to orgasm again um during sex so and the the i can't think of the rate i should have looked it up earlier but that is that is out there so i mean if you are warming things up at first and they are able to achieve orgasm then you've kind of helped yourself along the way because you already have one partner satisfied mm -hmm. so i mean if, if we're going to the satis the satisfaction rate there you're already betting a thousand so, yeah. you know, doing it again is just high fives all around. Um, but I think the side of the healthy relationship thing is that it's not something that's going to be talked about. And, you know, we've already harped on communication. It's something I'm not sure people are comfortable being like, okay, I'm going to go upstairs and masturbate, um, even though it's three in the afternoon and, you know, you're right next to me. But you don't need to you know, sometimes like you already said, it's just, it's part of your own routine or, mm. or, um, you know, whatever your stress relief avenue is, but yeah. it also can be part of a healthy sexual relationship. If you want to, uh, dive into that. So what I'm giving you all the, I'm giving you all the, the, the yeah. tough stuff. Well, so talking about more of it as foreplay and mm -hmm. mutual masturbation. Mm -hmm. um, some of that, I, it's like, I, I want to bring like show and tell into it, but we don't get show and tell until the third act. Part three. <laughs> yes. Uh, however, I think there is an intimacy in showing your partner. Mm -hmm. um, hmm, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. Showing your partner what you like and teaching your partner what you like. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, that's sort of where some of the communication comes in, but there are things like you can watch each other masturbate. That's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. I actually know, you know, sometimes that's a very hard no for people um, where they're not gonna do that in front of their partner. So maybe that if that's, how it is for you and you're not comfortable with it that's mm -hmm. totally fine like that's not necessarily what i'm advocating what i'm advocating is communication about being willing to show your partner what you like um masturbate in front of them masturbate together mm -hmm. do it for each other join in while the other partner is also working on themselves like you there's just there's yeah. a lot of stuff you can mm -hmm. do like yeah um and i think I really think sex toys where I want to have the most fun with this, but I think there are moments with couples where you can have something like really hot and spicy shit happen between the two of y'all because you're doing something and you know, you're going to get like absolute pleasure from it, from touching yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly what 
is going to get you off. And I think a lot of times you'd be surprised like your partner is going to be very excited to see you do that. So yeah. there are people who love seeing their partners get themselves off. And I'm gonna gonna go the other avenue here. I think it's in some ways more intimate. Um, I, I think you're really showing a very vulnerable side of yourself because there is, you know, how you are, some people are their, their worst self-critic cough, cough. And, uh, I think it's, wow. it's, <laughs> I think it's, so, wow, RJ. <laughs> I think it's, you know, I think it's tough for some people to open themselves up, even if they're in a committed relationship where they've already had sex, hand jobs, blow jobs, uh, you know, kind of lingus, whatever, analingus, what, you know, whatever avenues you've already reached, but that specific thing is still like this unseen taboo that you, you refuse to take part of because it's your last, your last vestige of like your own, your own person. Like that's, that's mm -hmm. the only thing that you have left of yourself that you haven't given to your partner. Um, and it's, it might be something that you never give to your partner. They might never see that, or it still might be a form of shame where they're walking in on you in the bathroom and you've got the laptop and your pants are around your ankles. Um, but, uh, I think the, the, the take home is that it's, it's not shameful. It's, it's, it's something that's part of your life. Like you both want obviously each other to be, um, personally fulfilled, sexually fulfilled, um, I just, I keep thinking of, uh, and we talked about this, uh, off camera, uh, last week at some point. And as we were leading up to this episode, I, I had said that, um, I can't remember who to attribute to, but when a man masturbates, it looks like an angry gorilla trying to peel a banana. When a woman masturbates, it looks like a beautiful film. And, uh, I, I think, I think that that image itself and, um, I mean, we're, we're like, I really wish we had a great poll of like you know how like just d down divided between um the different you know kind of relationships like how comfortable are you doing this mm -hmm. is this something that you would try is this a and and sometimes i think it's it's too how we lead into um we talk a lot about sexual compatibility and how people need to kind of understand um and again going back to our first episode where we communication these are my wills. These are my won'ts. These are my do's. These are my don'ts. Mm -hmm. And you know how, if, okay, you're, you're guiding me right now. I'm coming to you and I'm saying, I want to try this. Mm -hmm. How do I approach my spouse, my significant other? How, how do I branch this olive leaf of, I want to show you, I want to watch you. What do I need to say? What do I need to do? So if that's something to explore, there are several options. Mm -hmm. uh, one is to all right everyone's going to be different and mm -hmm. what is comfortable um if you're aware of your own fantasies um you can start it and open it off by like hey i want to tell you what my fantasies are while i touch myself so if you want to do that for your partner mm -hmm. uh, that's something to consider offering to watch porn with them however that has backfired so hard in some couples where some people have learned something very like they're like themselves. i didn't need to know yeah. that you wanted that like yeah. it's just like you're like that's what you're into mm -hmm. so that's one where that has been recommended to people mm -hmm. before and then i've heard of it backfiring so depending on the couple depending on what you know about each other maybe maybe just pause and think about that but I would focus more on I would love to see you feel good I would love it if you taught me how to make you feel amazing I want to mm -hmm. know what it is I can do for you uh, so we have the best experience ever like and I imagine it's really easy to put myself in the position of imagining a man asking a woman for this I will say that yes. like couples like heterosexual couples mm -hmm. um and how they approach this they're more tense about it because if you think about the nature of um sex between women and between men masturbation isn't nearly as much of a stigma there like no that's, not at all um and 
so there's that but when we're talking about like a man approaching a woman and being like hey baby i want to see you masturbate like <laughs> I just imagine a guy that you're, hey baby I want to see you masturbate it's just it's like it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't really work but if well, it's, you need to subscribe to my OnlyFans which yeah. is right now 35% off no um, um I mean yeah it's like if you want to see that like yeah pay like yeah pay to play pay yeah. to play I, I think there's a lot to be said about if you want to watch your partner masturbate, mm-hmm. think about your reasons for it. Are you, is it because you want to get off to them doing it or do you want to learn? Yeah. And whatever your reason is, if you want to approach your partner about it, be honest. Don't, don't say, like, don't, don't lie about what your reasons are. Cause that's fucking shitty. Like we're talking yeah. about communications, be mm-hmm. open with your partner, but Think about the fact that if you know how they pleasure themselves and what really gets them off, um, then you get to learn and ask them, how do I, what's the best way to bring you pleasure? And think of it that way. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Um, I think when a woman is approaching a man about it, it's going to be as simple. I mean, I really think you could say it's as simple as just being like, Hey, I want to see how you touch yourself. And I, you know, sometimes women might go to give um, someone a hand job mm-hmm. and what a man will do to them, their own dick. <laughs> like <laughs> it is aggressive versus what, like how a woman, like how we just approach it. Like with like, Oh my God, like this is some, <laughs> some fucking thing Listen, that was carved from marble like thousands of years ago i, I was want like, you to know that my dick owes you money all right <laughs> and i want you to beat it like it does all right okay you're the u.s government my dick is my student loans all right and you're gonna fucking get every last dollar out of me you hear me <laughs> i can't <laughs> I, okay. I think, but at but this that's, point, that's sort of what it, that there is a difference. Like if you do think about it the way like women, mm-hmm. how do you think, and I'm not talking about, you know, Owen Gray on OnlyFans and how he gets himself off. If you know, Good you plug. know, if you don't, you don't <laughs> No. If you're listening. Hi, Owen. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> I love how this is audio and vision <laughs> and video. Uh, um, I have no, I have no shame. Yeah. On that one. Uh, but he's a, he's an actor and he will say like, I'm acting this out. It's performative. Yeah. But mm-hmm. when you think about it, like how does somebody, how do they actually get themselves off? What does it look like? What's the most efficient? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You'd be surprised with what it looks like for what we think it looks like and what men think it looks like. And men, yeah, that G-spot fucking exists. And women, if you know where your G-spot is and know how to hit it mm-hmm. um, while masturbating, you can teach them. However, that's not always for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I will say that it's like sometimes someone gets around a clit and they don't know what to do with it either. And everyone is different in terms of sensitivity levels as well. Like Agreed. they see something in porn and they're like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. Not everybody <sighs> can, can fucking deal with whatever happens. That's, in that's, porn. that's also a future episode where we, a, we're going to, I'm we're so gonna, excited. That that's, <laughs> that's going to be a whole episode. <laughs> um, be, but yeah. I, I think you're right. And I think, you know, people fall into this trap, especially when they go from one relationship to another they're like well the last one like this so i know she's gonna like that and that's yeah. not the case okay it does you, just because you played the game doesn't mean you know the rules for everybody yeah. um so, I, i'm always gonna go back to like hey tell me what you want yes or hey tell me how to make you feel good those are that's hot like yeah. you come at me with that and i'm like all right <laughs> <laughs> you can actually get that audio clip from episode one. So anyone, if they want to splice it out, that's from episode one. I don't remember one. that. that didn't oh, I, re- <laughs> <laughs> I remember you talking about unfucked barrels. That's all I remember <laughs> from that. On that note, uh, we will wrap it up nicely with the idea that yes, there is a G spot. It's unfortunately six inches inside of a man's asshole. 
Um, but that's that's a whole other avenue like that a, I think I think I think part three when we get into the toys will will kind of uh we'll, we'll have a drink we'll, and we'll bend over and ease you into know it. cheers to that. So uh, I'd like to get into flight number three um, yes, because I haven't had a drink in a while and I think I need it. Oh shit! So uh, I'm drinking a ten year old rye from Whistle Pig. Uh, it is eighty to ninety dollars. You will have a hard time finding it every once in a while um they usually go right off the shelves they're very popular it's got notes of cinnamon cloves it's very spicy which we're gonna have a spicy finish here so we might as well i've actually never heard of that so at some point i'm gonna have to get my hands on it i I believe the emblem is a pig with a top hat so you know it's classy fancy Love fancy. it. It's a fancy, fancy pig. It's a fancy pig. Yeah. I want to say it's a monocle, but I'm not sure. You probably should. You, you should have a monocle. You know, if you I, have a top hat, you need a monocle. I'll draw that shit onto the bottle. Draw a monocle or put googly eyes on it. Like those. Anyway. Wow, that's really, really good. It's impressive to note when something is, albeit expensive, and mm-hmm. it deserves to be expensive because it's pretty damn good. Yeah, exactly. All of mine have been from Kentucky. Uh, I chose Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. Um, so it's oaked in a second, or yeah, it's aged in a second oak barrel as well. And it gives it, there's almost, it's just so smooth. And it to me, it smells like maple syrup. And I know earlier what I had said with Buffalo Trace is that it was too sweet, but this one is so well balanced with, um, there's almost a, there's like a resin to it and pepper, like toasted sugars, cotton candy, which I, I hate, but I kind of get some of that. It's just so well balanced and smooth mm-hmm. that I'm absolutely love it. It's $45. And I don't know how hard it is to find when we purchased it. They were like, and we purchased it from Woodford Reserve in Kentucky. Uh, they were like, this is limited, da 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 da. And now my husband's like, no, I can find it. Like I can find it here. So, but about forty-five dollars, and it's rated at an eighty-nine. The mm-hmm. other two are rated at ninety, but this is the one out of the three is my favorite. So, cheers, cheers. Now, um, it's just a real sexy. I love Woodford. I, just, I really like, do. I was gonna pick Woodford, but one. it just it's such a classic, beautiful little. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Just um, shout out to my partner. He actually helped me. He helped me choose the flights today for me. Yeah. So shout out to him for. Cheers to that ripped God. Yeah, he's he is a God. He really, is. he he doesn't, he will not be listening to this show. I love him. I respect that. He's helped with a lot of the research though. So my, uh, same on my end. My, my yeah. spouse uh, is also like, you talk about whatever you want. Just not going to listen to it. And like, mm-hmm. that's. That's a beautiful and happy marriage. That's all you that's need. Kind to know. Of, that's, that's kind all of you like need to masturbation. Know, folks. Like you know, mm-hmm. you know your spouse is doing it. If you know, you know. Like you know they're doing it. You don't mm-hmm. need to always, yeah. you know, be like, hey, I'm just all up yeah. in your business about it. That's so right. it's great. Being yeah. on the sidelines is fun too. Now, uh all right. Nikki Uh-oh. has brought some toys for us to gander at. Um, so our, our final part is going to be a little difficult for our audio viewers, but I will try to describe what's going on as best as I can. So please proceed. All right. I'm going to start just with a quick, um, I want to say a few things before I'm like looking at a pile of sex toys. It's she is, I am like, and and y'all, y'all can't see it. Not all of them are going to come out to play, um, but masturbation is used as like part of sexual treatment plans um, for you know dysfunction, but also as a part of like when the body changes during transitioning with hormones or surgery. Uh, it's also a great way to learn about our bodies and whatnot. So I'm going to add that in there and say that the first thing we usually start to learn with is the hands like these Mm -hmm. your hands are your first I don't want to say line of defense but like the first like hey this is free and it's attached to you yeah um however that is also not doable for everyone um people with 
arthritis, your wrist gets tired, uh, anything like that. So think about it. Your hands don't work for the job. Um, then you Those go to poor other arthritic souls. Honestly, like my wrist, I, I do a lot of typing. My wrist gets mm-hmm. fucking tired. Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm like, I don't want to, but I will say that if you, um, are using your hands a lot and there are a lot of things to explore if you have a vulva uh there's your clit you have two sets of lips down there to play with as well and move them around um you can find your g-spot in your vagina if you it's about you stick one or two fingers in depending on your preference um and press like upwards against the vaginal wall there's just like this rough patch um you could find that you could play that way you can also lubricate a finger and stick it up your ass and see how that feels i'm not saying everyone needs to do that but if you're going to do that when you go from don't go from ass to vagina you gotta fucking clean that finger b to a never a to b yes and people with if you have a penis you have balls to tug on like you play with you have a taint and you have um your own your asshole. Own asshole. And very sensitive nerve endings if you don't want to go all the way in, yeah. actually just on the outside, just ring even around the rosy. Above. Exactly. That's yes, it's perfect. It's a very morbid song, actually. A hundred percent. But very, I want to know. We're talking about it in this way. Yes. Exactly. Um, so um, what I want to say is you have your hands. If you're going to use them, fucking wash your hands. Wash your hands before your nails. And clip your nails, clip your fucking nails. I usually have very, very long nails. And I also used to teach food service stuff. So I'm, I'm just really conscious of these things. So uh, yeah, just, mm, if you're going to stick a finger in something, make sure your hands are clean and you clip And moisturize nails. your hands. You don't want moisturize your hands. Somebody wants rough and shoddy cows. I mean, it's, it's one way or another, I, but sometimes smooth hands help too. I mean... For certain a, places. A dick can take some calluses though. Like, right? Like a calloused hand. Like you come on. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I, I mean, you know here's we a, don't here, have to answer that no, question. We're going we're we're gonna talk about this because we're we're to, to the late and great Betty White. All right. Oh, she she used queen. to say that uh, you know, I, you know, I don't understand why everyone, you know, you know, the allegory, oh, you're being a pussy. And, you know, how like a pussy is weak. She's like, balls are weak. You get hit in the balls, you're down. She's like, a pussy can take a fucking beating. She probably didn't say fucking, but I'm going to put that in there. Okay. You birth Your a head child. cannon. Okay. Mm-hmm. It can take a smack around. All right. You smack a dick the wrong way. And that is just game over. All right. It, there's no recovery from that. Okay. That's, that's true. A good, that's, a, that's, that's, that's the clip right there. That's the clip. <laughs> Let's send that to my mom. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> Uh, moving on i want to all um right. Let's okay talk about so toys. all right so this is this is how i i am if it's okay with you for the the sake of um making sure that we stick within a, a frame of time mm-hmm. um maybe a couple for one avenue of play if that makes sense and then a couple yep. for the other avenue of play so take it away so i'm gonna start by talking about just the og like the wand, the magic wand, the Hitachi. Hitachi, right? Like this. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just. I would say you don't need anything else, but that's. There's. I have like a flagship item that is mm-hmm. the queen for me, but um, the Hitachi vibrator. I think a lot of people know of it as like, oh, it's a personal massager, and you think of massaging your back or you don't think but that's Mm. almost like uh, how is it marketed and i will say this is a very intense product um and i believe the head of this may not be silicone um and oh real quick when shopping for a vibrator Mm -hmm. look at the materials that are used or any sex toy silicone is going to be your best friend but you need to be very aware and read the label about what type of lubricants you can use with it um, and how they are cleaned. That's, there's also glass and metal products out there and ter- for penetration. Mm-hmm. Always read the box to see mm-hmm. what they recommend. 
Um, I could go into all of it, but we don't have time for that. So, mm-hmm. so now great, do you do great. now? I, I know some people put a covering on the end of their Hitachi, uh, like a like sometimes a condom sometimes. or something like that. As like, but it, it, saran like, wrap. I've seen that. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can. It's honestly mm-hmm. personal preference. Uh, I would say wash your toy before and after and this is all of them, and store it properly. I have had these toys sitting here like since early this morning, and my dog has come into this room, and there's like dog hair on them, so you just store them in a way. I know, right? I'm like, god damn it, Blue. Um, I'm gonna wash all of these. So this is like the flagship one. Um, I'm not gonna... When shopping for a vibrator, I'm gonna add Mm -hmm. this before bringing out the second one, uh, the standard wand vibrator figure out noise level if you can like look for reviews because vibrators mm-hmm. a good quality vibrator can be expensive this Hitachi it's kind of expensive it's pretty expensive it lasts a long time mm-hmm. can you actually uh, do me a favor can you turn them on so I can yeah, I hear will. how loud I don't want to hit the mic Dan's gonna kill me um and this one has eight different settings. What are we on uh, now? That one's like the third one. But <laughs> it I, sounds like you're at a rave, right? Like, I know. Ding, 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 ding. Can we get, what's the like, I've had a rough day setting? Like, is there like an eight or an 11? Like what's? Um, I think I have an. That's a sound. I- I heard it like Pavlov's dog. Okay, that's enough of that. Sorry. <laughs> Pavlov's dog. <laughs> Keep it down. Keep it down down there. Keep it down. I just put that down. Okay. Hands All right. Up. So, okay. So, what does, so is the other one like quieter or is it just? No, this one. So, this one costs a shit ton of money. And I talked earlier about um, couples play. Mm -hmm. This is one that is Love Ends, I think is the name of it. It's a Bluetooth one where your partner can be the one controlling everything. Mm. Uh, But this one, if you use it on your own, oh, come on. Literally. If you use it on your own, if I can get it to turn on. Take it to dinner first. No, okay, there we go. This one, that's the lowest setting and it is loud as fuck. Like when you put it against your skin, it doesn't actually get better. Um, and geez, it's like, wow. It's so is that it's like pulsing, or is that just the straight straight that's through? That's the straight one, and that's okay. the lowest. Setting. <clears throat> so that's the lowest. For, the, for those who couldn't hear, just because there was it was kind of intermittently, it is it is loud. I can I can hear it through my headphones. It's it's definitely it's got a sound. I and I this one was very expensive. Mm -hmm. and it's silicone but because Mm -hmm. of how loud it is i'm like i don't love it when you when you say expensive when you say expensive what are we talking so hitachi is in the i want to say like 80 dollars i don't okay i was gonna guess i don't i don't think that's i don't think that's right actually it depends Mm -hmm. on where you buy it from Mm -hmm. um i'm not gonna call out a massive company with questionable ethics and buying sex toys from them i Mm -hmm. So we're talking upper ceiling 80, but probably a little, a little it might less be, than No, it might be a little bit higher. Oh, okay. Um, these last a really long time, the Hitachis. Um, this Love Ends, I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, I think this was 189, maybe. Wow. I have one that's more expensive, though. So those are the two wand vibrators. Um, mm-hmm. I, those are meant for vibration of uh, the clit. Mm-hmm. You could also put it on your nipple. That's fun too, you know. Um, however, there's another one that's meant for the clit, and this is really great for someone who can't handle vibration mm-hmm. uh, if you're really sensitive. And when I say put it on the clit, your the clit is hid hidden under a hood. Correct. So there it's is like a, a little hood. button, mm-hmm. and then there's a hood over it. You're not directly putting it on the little the clip like the, the, man i want to smack myself i just girl. sounded like i was trying to mansplain to you yeah there's a there, there's a clitoral like you don't You're fucking know yeah no that's uh, that was You're my fine. first response i was like okay yes back to it. okay yeah no you're fine. there's you're a fine. there's a clitoris okay so that yes. one is is that a is that a like a, is it suction 
So um, it's actually, this is the one that blows air, but then it, you put it directly up to the clit. It's a little mm -hmm. circle and it <clears throat> legit, it blows air like a shitty, like 99 cent personal fan that you would get at a fucking amusement park. Like that's what it feels like. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can play with it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you put it directly up on your hood in the clit, just like, around that area and find a suction point mm -hmm. that's vibrates the skin and that's supposed to be very nice um i've never used one of these before i have a hitachi yeah i just you drive a maserati why are you gonna be grinding around in a golf cart i got gotcha. i actually got this from target in the oh. best target run ever the other day for those local to myself in the tri-state area on the East Coast, unfortunately, our targets do not play that game. Our it Their does. game, and now we focus on prophylactics, uh, day after pills, and uh, pregnancy tests. We don't have the uh, the strokers or the jokers. Well, okay. What that is suck. that? Sucks to suck. Okay. <laughs> So this. So for those who can't see, it is a, a purple boomerangy looking, but like if a boomerang was made of silicone, it's, it's got little. Yeah, it's a curve. It's like got With, little knobbies, little knobbies at the end. Yeah, it's knobbed at the end. Knobbed for their pleasure. I'm like, I'm having to really, really not say some shit. Okay, uh, this type of vibrator is great for the G spot. So it's for mm -hmm. penetration. So that um, goes inside. That one actually this goes inside. This one goes inside. However, okay. because it vibrates, you can mm -hmm. use it on your clit, like on your clit, around the hood. You can explore your whole, your labia, the entire vulva with it. Double threat. Then, I love it. Wait. Triple so threat. Triple threat. Uh, so the instructions in it, actually like the little packet that came with it, also mm -hmm. mentioned uh, for anal play. Now, Yes. This can also be used to stimulate the prostate. And there are yeah. two sides of it. There's a smaller mm -hmm. side, larger side. You figure out what works. Yeah. And I love this toy because even though it was marketed as for like the G spot, it's also meant to stimulate the prostate. Mm -hmm. So people with prostates, um, this is for you as well. This is also from Target. Now, this one though. Price range know. for this one? How much this was this? 30, I think, on sale. Ooh, okay. So that's a date night. That's a date night for somebody. Can you hear that? A little. Oh, yeah. That's a little bit. It's not picking okay. up a ton of it. <laughs> that was a sound. <laughs> this one is so fucking loud. I'm at, uh -huh. like, I'm at it. I guess I'm at like a ROM. Romstein, Romstein, I don't know. Someone's gonna fucking come at me. Uh, or a mindless self indulgence concert. Like that's what mm -hmm. it sounds like. It's yeah, it's so loud. So I don't know. I kind of fucking hate it. But I feel like in you know is. in your own home, is is noise really the issue? I no. Okay, so that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. When talking about self care and self love and yeah. self pleasure, mm -hmm. you have to do the things that work for you noises will throw me out of it immediately okay um certain sounds mm -hmm. certain smells just mm -hmm. things like that and so i know these i know this stuff about myself so if i were to start playing with a toy like this and it's really fucking loud i'm gonna be mm -hmm. like okay done no nope, there's nothing i can't like i'm mm -mm. like gotcha. any sort of pleasure right. i'm gonna get from it so that's something to consider but how however there are people who don't have the luxury of privacy mm -hmm. so here yeah like I close the yeah. door and I have a white noise machine and mm -hmm. he doesn't care. He yeah. Doesn't yeah. Shit. I'm not worried mm -hmm. about it, but that's not the case for everybody. So, yeah. however, it's a powerful toy and it might work. Um, I also mentioned that that's for, the, can be used for the prostate. The prostate is, you know, slide a finger, a well lubricated, lubricated finger, finger. That's right. Uh, inside your anus. Uh, some people say it's about knuckle deep. Others if you longer. if you're dry you don't fly all right take sure take the heed yes yes um the there is some natural lubrication mm -hmm. that's not what it's meant for it's not nope. for having something rammed inside that's not correct what that lubrication is for. correct um yeah 
but this is a prostate massager and it fucking moves on its own okay so what she's holding here uh i love your description it looks like a claw okay there's (laughs) uh one one okay there's she's holding uh the white there's a white handle that leads to something that looks like a thick thumb and then if you put your uh two fingers together but a little thicker and it forms a claw and it moves it it like gyrates it moves but it also does this sort of you take two fingers and you go come hither like that sort of motion Mm -hmm. um that's the motion and Mm -hmm. This is a, meant for the prostate, but even when looking at the toy um, and the instructions can also be used for the G-spot. And yeah. if I bring out my personal flagship, like this is probably one of the top things I've ever purchased. It's $250, so fuck. Um, this is meant, it hits the G-spot at certain angles, but it's actually mm-hmm. pretty long, but it does the same Oh God, are you not charged? All right. So uh, for those at home, this is again, a similar product. It's got a handle towards the base. Um, I would say the first part, like that thumb I was describing is a little tinier, but the second part's a little thicker. Mm -hmm. And this one, I would not, this one, it's probably too much for prostate massage. However, oh boy. um, Yeah. Yeah. Just like heard a noise over there and i've got paranoid i'm like is someone gonna walk in on me you know touching yeah. my sex toys mm-hmm. it's, it's being recorded but you can mm-hmm. see they're like a similar shape um mm-hmm. and similar price points this is the same brand i don't remember this prostate massager mm-hmm. i don't know how much it is so those are some of the basics on i want you to i want you to jump now into just for the the sake of time yeah. um maybe jump ahead a little bit um i want you to pick i want you to pick like two two or three three might be pushing it but like i want you to pick two okay pick two that you really want to just show off to the world i'm going to we're gonna go with strokers now strokers i have a couple of options for strokers um (sighs) I'm going to leave the rest of the anal toys. Maybe we'll have like a whole episode on anal. Ass play. That's fine. Ass play is. Seriously. Yeah. Ass play is ass play. That's what ass it play is. is ass play. Uh, so these products are called strokers. You may mm-hmm. know. <clears throat> Fleshlight. So Fleshlight is have a very, very large one here. That's not actually Fleshlight. It's called a stroker. Mm-hmm. This one is cheap i'm not going to show the you don't have to you can imagine at home uh it looks like a large cup and then at the top is probably a silicone based mold it's not silicone oh this one is not silicone so right. most of the strokers out there mm-hmm. are soft products made of tpe oh, and okay. um that's to simulate flesh a bit more oh wow yeah. okay and i didn't know that all right a lot softer so uh, either way there's just a hole at the top Fuck that you fuck that's that's it's a very rudimentary thing there's no multiple levels and i know different uh strokers have inside of them uh different molds inside to uh replicate different textures uh different sensations um some people need a tighter sensation some need a a looser um and uh, i know certain um adult film stars out there actually do molds to themselves uh so you can i guess see what that's like um i also uh understand that you know you don't use certain lubricants with it you it's definitely a daily maintenance cleaning requirements uh there's certain um uh certain implements that you use to clean it certain implements the uh items that you use to maintain it um but how much how much are we talking so i don't actually I did not acquire this. This okay. is not a purchase that I made. Mm-hmm. I was told it is this one in particular came from a website. And this person, he has no idea if it's going to give him his dick cancer, is what he said, because of how cheap it is. It also is so difficult to clean. So with any stroker, I mm-hmm. have another one. Um, and strokers sometimes vibrate. So this is like a two-sided stroker. You have some that don't have an exit but um 
if you look at well like so you could put your dick all the way through this one stop it, just, it i just find I'm it to be i straight. i find it no i just i'm laughing because you say exit and the top of it is a for those at home um <laughs> it's the top of it is a mouth and the bottom of it is an asshole <laughs> fair enough fair enough yeah okay uh, good great observation for some um, people an exit is an entrance yeah but i don't you won't really be able to see this at home however yeah. when we talk about cleaning these mm-hmm. it, if you have one that vibrates as well and it's in a plastic container, imagine yeah. it being in like a thermos. Yeah. You have to clean all of this oh, everything stuff inside. Yeah. And you have to powder it. Mm-hmm. And that's for, for those who don't yes. know water in a space that is not oxygen sealed creates moisture molds um and it can cause some nasty stuff. Mm-hmm. So it is important to clean. First off, you should be cleaning all of your sex toys. That's, 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 that's the important thing, but I know higher. So if we're, if we're going back to fleshlight, if we're talking about this, the flagship item, um, they actually have at the bottom, a, a twist off cap that allows you to clean thoroughly through um, you. They recommend starting by flushing with water, obviously, because um I don't think anybody's pulling out of a flashlight. Um, <laughs> I don't I'm think bad. anyone's. I'm I'm I don't say think I... anyone's being. No, 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 no. For the money shot, for the money yeah. shot on OnlyFans, they pull out. They pull out of the flash, the flashlight. Just saying. <sighs> News to me. So uh, I thought I'd let you know. This is educational. Yeah. Um, as uh, someone who. Uh, <laughs> is is learning as as we go uh <laughs> talking about this stuff um uh, just from uh product specs and product reviews that i've had to research i did have to research this before before i came on um they were talking about a lot of it is uh there is definite wear and tear to it like it will change over time to however often you're using it and however thorough you're using it um but uh, it's definitely like something, it's a maintainable item that you can definitely mm-hmm. uh, keep up with and everything like that. But um, I will segue from that to mm-hmm. two options that are easier to clean or disposable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is just, this stroker, I bought it from Target. Mm-hmm. It's called, it's by a brand called Cake. Mm-hmm. And it has two different holes and it's made of, this is TPE. You know, those, um, stress balls that you squeeze yeah like i'm trying to do this where you don't hear it on the mic but you, mm-hmm. you might oh, God, i could hear it that's a sound <laughs> so it feels like one of those and so i bought this yesterday because i was like i really want to see what it's about it was 15 dollars, mm-hmm. so it is a stroker it's a lot easier to clean mm-hmm. because it's seriously just a piece of tpe mm-hmm. there are two different holes mm-hmm. to use um and it's less expensive. So yeah. it's less of an investment and it's easier to clean. So when it does wear down, because it will, um, you can throw it out it. and you spend your $15 for another one. You know, gotcha. honestly, you just turn it into a stress ball, like at your desk. That's what I'm Unless using it's it all, for. You haven't cleaned it. It's all something inside and you know, it doesn't, you squeeze it and then it doesn't unsqueeze. Okay. Um, <laughs> the last thing real quick is yes. uh, this brand is called a Tenga egg, but mm-hmm. they're eggs and it's a basically they come with their own lubricant um and they are very i don't know if i want to put this on the cucumber or not but they look just like an egg um but they they stretch to really stretch like yeah. they stretch wow. like nikki's putting it on her entire hand right now i could probably yeah that'll go yep i have did you thought about did you just think about putting it on your foot there for a second? No, a cucumber. I have a cucumber. Okay, I was going to say, we don't want people to subscribe for that. I mean, pay me. <laughs> I mean, on, I, our, on our next Patreon episode. Yeah, Nikki's going to put a tang egg on her foot. No, so these are nice because they're disposable. Mm-hmm. However, anything that's disposable, you got to think about the environment. But Absolutely. We don't want sea I mean, turtles. Yeah. Stuck with Tenga eggs on their heads. Yeah. That is for time. <laughs> All I'm gonna say about toys. For um, for time's sake, uh, first off, thank you for showing off your wonderful collection. 
Um, I didn't show you all of them. <laughs> I know we had to limit it. For those at home, we did limit it. Uh, we discussed earlier about uh, mm-hmm. all the all the tricks that are over at Nikki's house, and she's got a lot of tricks. So, I mean, maybe later on episodes, there's going to be a lot more down the way that I think we could bring them out and kind of show oh, off everything. Definitely, there are certain subjects like we didn't get to edging today. I can talk mm. about edging. Uh, with different topics, which I'll probably mm. really enjoy talking about this. So there's so much more to talk about with masturbation. Well, edging is basically just prolonging satisfaction for the point of satisfaction. So I feel like if we prolong it now to the next episode, we're really just talking about edging right now. Yeah, we're so, edging right now. <laughs> we're edging right now. We um, totally edging. Uh, normally, uh, as we try and do in our first episode and uh, continue on, we kind of end with a an anecdote that we might have in our own personal histories or histories of, of friends we know. Um, for the sake of time, unfortunately, I think it's better that we kind of wrap up in a more meaningful approach and kind of just say what this episode means to us. And uh, on my end, I will just say that education, um, especially in this format, uh, being open and honest and talking that there is no shame in what you do um, behind closed doors uh, in a safe and healthy environment, um, <clears throat> that masturbation is something that everyone does like there's there's no two ways to put it and as i said earlier you know the statistics put how many people do it and then how many people are lying about doing it um or not doing it uh so nikki what have you what is your take home today i own a lot of sex toys Mm -hmm. um i my pronouns she they my entire life experience has been that as a woman i have a vulva i have masturbated and i do and that's okay. And people should be able to say that without fear. Like that should not freak anybody out. And it's really important because sure, some people might take that as like, oh, I can't believe you're saying that. But there's a bit of empowerment that comes from owning that. And mm-hmm. I hope that if anyone's listening, there's maybe you'll feel more comfortable talking about it, even with your friends. Um, just like you and your you and your friends can talk about this stuff. It's fine. You probably all do it. So for me, it was about opening up the conversation and then really talking about that in the context of couples. Like I'm in a relationship and I will say that masturbation has led to some of the hottest fucking sex of my life. So like I'm put, I'm just putting it out there. And on that note, I will say thank you from myself, RJ. Thank you to Nikki for being a wonderful co-host. And we look forward to seeing you for our next episode. Um, Check us out on Gate Crashers Pod. And uh, here's to uh, a better, healthier sex life. Cheers to you. Cheers. (laughs) 